<laughs> hey, gearheads. It's Jeff. It's Wednesday. It's 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Pardon me. <coughs> Let's try that again. Hey, gearheads. It's Jeff. It's 8 o'clock on the East Coast. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report, where we take a look at everything that's been published since this show last week. That would be 8 o'clock last Wednesday. And this show. So this time we've, we have three we have three things to talk about, three articles that were published, plus a few other things that are kind of following through from that, uh, the gathering event that we went to in South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. So uh, first, you know, while we're waiting for people to show up, you know, um, I, honestly, I got the uh, notifications for this show out a little bit late. So I expect people to kind of drag in a little bit. When you show up, please go ahead and say something in the comments. We are available on YouTube and on Facebook. Why, you ask? Why are we available on both platforms when we used to be on YouTube only? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the good folks at Riton Optics saw fit to sponsor this show, and that allowed us to upgrade to a premium streaming service that will multicast to both platforms. So thank you so much to Riton Optics. Go check them out if you're in the market for um, red dots, micro dots, full-size scopes. They've really got a pretty expansive line of products. And uh, you can go check out the reviews that we have on Gear Report for some Riton Optics that we looked at before. Crocs for sale, size 13. Dude, you're in luck. I got the tactical Crocs right here. Oh, look at this. I call these my indoor Crocs, Joe. These are the ones that used to be my outdoor Crocs. They got retired from outdoor use. Now I use them indoor only because they are smooth as a baby's bottom. I'll tell you what, you hit a little, hit a little bit of wet uh, garage floor in these and your feet will go out from under you in a big way. Kind of like that the video that, um, that Patrick posted that, that you commented on this morning where the guy's feet went out from under him. Man, I'll tell you what, the tactical Crocs, the old tactical Crocs, the newer tactical Crocs are actually in worse shape than these. So it's time to upgrade the Crocs. I'm glad you mentioned that. If you have any suggestions on what model of Crocs I should go with moving forward, please let me know. All right. Looks like I am alone at the moment. We'll see if anyone else shows up. Uh, TJ has already let me know that he is stuck at work and not going to make it this evening. So this week at Gear Report, looks like I'm just going to run through our agenda. Maybe kind of a short one because I got to be honest with you. I am so buried in video editing and complicated shipping. I've got some Humvee parts I'm trying to ship out to people that uh, the shipping companies are just not cooperating at all. Snub, it's 8.03. All right, go away. Come back in 10 minutes, all right? You are way too soon to be coming in with this, I'm here, you can start now stuff, all right? I, well, let me take that back. You're here and we appreciate you. Okay, that's what I meant to say. All right, so let's move to the first part of our agenda for this evening. Recently completed reviews. So this is the portion of the show where we look at the things that have been published recently. That's why we call it recently completed. All right, let's look at uh, Caleb. Caleb did a pretty big one here. Uh, you know, over last summer, TJ and I visited the Diamondback factory down in uh, let's see, where are they? They're in Cocoa, not Cocoa Beach, but Cocoa, Florida. And we did a couple different videos from there. I've actually got one or two left I can edit and post if I ever have time. Uh, going through their AR-15 lineup, the different grades of, uh, of uh, rifles and pistols they offer. Um, after we did some of those and they sent the, um, the, the DBX what is it called? The, the DBX 5.7 to TJ to review. Uh, Caleb got a hold of this AR-10. The DB-10P is an AR-10 pistol. And if you have any interest in that, I mean, this is this is a lot of punch in, I'm not going to call it a little package, but for a 308 to be as small as that is, um, that that's uh, pretty impressive. I think fire breathing, he may even use the word fire breathing in here somewhere. That's, that's probably how I would describe it. So this one is set up with some Magpul furniture. 
And one of my absolute favorites, the GearHead Tail Hook. This is the Mod 2. Uh, I haven't actually used a Mod 2. I like the Mod 1 that's aluminum. This is a, an injection molded plastic. Uh, it looks a little wider and more comfortable, but I, I like the aluminum one. Uh, anyhow, got a bunch of upgraded features here. If you have any interest in that, scroll down through this article and uh, read it. You can get all the pros, cons, plus and minuses. Caleb did some pretty extensive, even during Ammogeddon, Caleb went out and did some pretty extensive testing to get groups with a bunch of different ammos. So please uh, go check out this article. Um, there's his pros and cons, final thoughts. I can tell you uh, he kind of liked it. Four out of five. You're going to have to dig a little deeper and go look at that article for yourself if you want to see what things he liked and what things he was less fond of. All right, who do we have here? All right, we already saw that Snob's here. So good to see you again, Snob. Listening in. You know what, TJ? I would give you a hard time for not being here, but I know that you're one of the hardest working people around. So it's good to have you out there in the chat. Let's see. Driving home. Taking us along for the ride. Um, Hey, that's, that's your call, man. I'm kind of a backseat driver, so just be aware of that. And I'll, I'll try not to mess with the radio or do, do too many things to, to knock you out of, uh, out of your rhythm while you're driving. All right. Let's look at another article. So uh, we just talked about TJ. Why don't we look at one of his? This was a quick review. So remember, we have full-length reviews like the one we just saw from Caleb, where it's you know paragraphs and paragraphs of pretty deep information about the product and how it was tested, and, and you're pretty extensive. A quick review is kind of what it sounds like. It's a lot uh, quicker. <laughs> it, it, it's brief. It's to the point. It's just giving you the basic information you need to know to decide, hey, is this interesting to me or not? So Strike Industries has the ECN and EEP. They come together in a package. And, you know, initially I said, no, we, we want to spell that out, that it's, uh, you know, a castle nut and an end plate. Uh, but then when I saw the pictures of the packaging, they literally call it the ECN and EEP for an AR with QD. So they, they got all the different acronyms in, in play here on this one. And frankly, that's a pretty fancy little uh, castle nut. And then you can see, um, see right up on this picture a little bit where it's got the little quick disconnect mount for, um, for a sling swivel to, to stick in there. So TJ, four out of five, he kind of liked him. If you want to get all the details on that, please go check out his article. And, uh, you know, something I typically forget to do uh, during this show, a couple things that I've been watching some other uh, other videos from other people, other live streams. TJ and I were going to be on Hank Strange's show last week, but then Hank wasn't feeling well. So we got canceled and uh, we're going to be there Friday. So if you're around Friday afternoon from seven to nine and you want to go check out the Who Moved My Freedom podcast on uh, Hank Strange's channel then uh, please do. Uh, you're, you're welcome to come and heckle TJ and I. It's going to drive me nuts. I think my glasses are crooked here. All right, maybe we can level those out. Um, anyhow, come check us out there. At something I saw that Hank does quite a bit is he reminds people, hey, don't forget to go to our website and sign up for our mailing list so you can keep track of us and uh, see new and exciting ways that you can support the things that we do. You know what? I wouldn't be opposed to you doing that with us either. So you can go to gear-report.com and we do have an email list. You can sign up there. I don't send out emails nearly as often as I should, but uh, it's about time for our monthly email to go out. Uh, sometimes it's twice a month, but uh, anyhow, it's about time for that to go out. So if you want to be kept in the loop on everything we're doing, please consider doing that. All right. What do we got here? Oh, Buck's here. Hey, everybody to you too. Oh, geez. It's like a trend now. Uh, see, G23 started this, rolling in late. So, okay, I'm here. You can start. And then Snob started picking up on it. Now Buck's going to do it too. Um, I, I guess it's all right. We, we're starting to get some, uh, we got a thing going on here. Out there, seven to nine is not a... After, okay, can we call it evening? I think we're going to call it evening. 
Yeah. So we'll call it evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time, Friday. That'll be Friday evening. Uh, TJ and I will be on with Hank Strange. So please come over and check us out on the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. That'll be, uh, we can get in a lot of trouble in two hours. You guys have seen, this is supposed to be like a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour sometimes. And and we have been known to get off the rails and go an hour, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes just to, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a thing. Oh, our tack of daughters. I'm not sure I've seen you here. I see you over on Clovers and maybe on Ghost every now and then. I have a question for you. I have noticed it's R dash tack and daughters, but it's pos possessive apostrophe S. I'm dying to know what's possessive and daughters what. I, I've been confused by that. I've been wanting to ask for a long time, but you've always been in someone else's channel and I didn't want to bug what they were doing. So I'm just curious. Um, language, I'm an editor, you know, language is interesting to me. So, all right, well, we're waiting on that. Uh, and th thanks so much, everyone, for, for wasting time that you will never get back again. You are burning it here with me this evening, and, and I appreciate every one of you for that. All right, so let's take a look at, here's another one. Make sure that's showing. Yes, it is. All right. Ultimate truck gun, question mark. Palmetto State Armory Jackal. And I'm calling this a range review because we actually did what, what we typically call a tabletop review uh, in the building. We were actually in the pro shop there at the sawmill in Lawrence, South Carolina at the gathering event. We, we shot the video in there and then we walked right across the little uh, parking lot gravel road to the shooting range and put some rounds through the Jackal and the different ARs and and actually some lead star arms, a couple different guns from them. We, we shot probably four, five, six different things there at the Palmetto booth. Uh, so I already put this video up and linked it in our uh, page for The Gathering. So you can go to, to that page, uh, which is probably linked in here somewhere as well. Uh, link for more info about that event. So if you want to see that, you can go there and see all the different videos we've done from it. Uh, but also this one, this one seems to be generating a lot more interest from people. Everyone wants to know about the Jackal. When's it going to be ready? What's it like? How did it shoot? So I wanted to put this one in writing as well, as well as some of the questions that I'm hearing about the production schedule, about how much it's going to cost, what kind of uh, different models with different features and different calibers and cartridges are they going to have? What's the schedule for rolling those out? What are the specs on it? Those are all things that are addressed in this article and also eh, mostly in the, in the video as well. And that video is with Dale, who is the lead engineer for all the AR platform stuff. There you go. I'm actually kind of happy with how this one turned out because we found the pro shop here, shot our video in it, and then I texted uh, Lola and Hank Strange and said, hey, because we had been talking earlier about there's there's no good place to do uh, an indoor kind of sound controlled uh, environment um, tabletop video and interview here. Uh, we, we just hadn't found anything. So so then when we found this inside, um, I, I sent him a text and said, hey, we just shot some stuff inside there. You should go check it out, see if that's going to work for you. So then they published their video before us, and it's the exact same camera angles. And, and, and I was like, oh, come on. But I got to tell you, I was so happy that our audio is way better. And I'm pretty proud of that. So TJ did a good job setting that up. And uh, we mixed in some... Uh, tabletop review, asking Dale questions and interrupting him. And it, it was fun, uh, making him uncomfortable and then going out and shooting. Uh, so there were some things I didn't love about the Jackal. Honestly, I'm not nearly as excited about it as I was before I shot it. So if you want to see why, read the article, watch the video. All right. Let me go back and see if we got any questions here. All right, Buck being friendly, bad grammar. <laughs> All right, well, good. 
I, I'm a big fan of saying, you know what? If you're going to do it, own it. So I like that. All right. More friendliness going on here. I'm going to get another one for the 762 build. What are we talking about? The uh, uh, That's probably the, the Castle Nut and um, what do they call it? EEP, the, the end plate. Yeah. All right. And TJ, I did send over the note to Fab Defense um, for all the parts that we had talked about. And, and Mike got back and said, hey, let me know for each of the parts what it's going to be used for so that I can, you know, position everything, set expectations for the brand. And I just haven't had time to do that yet. So hopefully I'll be able to get to that really soon. We can get those additional parts coming in and have um, some more stuff to talk about. All right, so let's see. I want to go back to the, uh, and you guys, I don't have a co-host here this evening, so I am count. <laughs> you know what, better late than never. We had a lot of people roll in late this evening, and uh, you know what? I know people get upset when people roll in late. I'm more of a, hey, but you're here. And I'm happy about that. So you don't have to be here. There's a whole world full of cool stuff you could be doing. If you're going to choose to be here with us, then that makes me happy and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much. So let's see. That was recently completed reviews. I can tell you the one that I'm working on right now is, um, boy, uh, I, I've made the executive decision. I, I think I'm going to leave this in there. It has a section where... Um, we're at the Canic booth and the uh, the marketing guy at Canic, I said, hey, we got someone who likes to pronounce it differently and, and correct people for saying it wrong when they say Canic. Uh, so can you, to the camera, tell us uh, how it's pronounced? And, and he did. And he did it in a way that uh, hopefully is not going to upset anyone. But that video, I've almost got it completely edited. That's going to have some Century products. Ooh, Century's got a new, um, it's an MP5 clone. And we shot that. Um, and that's in the video. And TJ shot a little, um, let's see. And there's also a replay. That's a very good point. Anyone can watch this and replay. Oh, you know what? We're talking about that kind of thing. Um, I see two thumbs up on here. But but more than two people watching. So if you could do us a solid and um, go ahead and give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You know what? I really don't care. Whatever makes you happy. If you're happy with what we're doing and you want to give us a thumbs up, then that's cool. If if you just want to be stubborn and give us a thumbs down, that's cool too. It's all interaction in the eyes of the algorithm. But uh, it does help other people see the broadcast and uh, be able to come in and have fun with this. So uh, with no co-host, I'm kind of I'm kind of dependent on you guys to, to have a little bit of interactive, interactivity in the comments. Uh, looks like we're seeing mostly YouTube tonight. Joe's over there on Facebook, so we appreciate we appreciate however you choose to interact with us. Thank you very much. Where's Toby been? You know, Toby um, Toby is a real estate mogul, and he's been buying and selling properties and relocating and uh, working on his business at Mining Ridge Armory. Um, which I believe, Buck, you may remember, he invited you to come shoot with him there at Mining Ridge Armory. And I would ask, uh, the only thing I'm going to ask is if you do that, let me know, because I want to go at the same time uh, so we could all hang out. Uh, but anyhow, um, Toby Toby was here a week or two ago uh, and just kind of hung out with us and talked and, and apologized for not being around much. But uh, I am hoping, I'm really hoping that when we get this... Uh, uh, Century Arms and Canic video posted where we specifically kind of call out Toby for for his pronunciation that um, I hope he's going to be here for that. Um, and I hope he takes it well because uh, it's all meant to be in fun. DJ Play Nice. Thank you. We do appreciate the thumbs up because, again, it does help people see that we are broadcasting and uh, here and available and, and ready for them to hop in and join us. So let's see. I wanted to show you. Let me go back down to share screen. I'll pick the Chrome tab that has the gathering. We looked at this last week, but I want to just show you what's changed since then. On this page, 
we have got, you know what, let me get rid of me on this. We're going to make that bigger so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I think this one needs to be refreshed because I typed something. There we go. It's like magic. What is the gathering? Nothing was there, and now there is. So now, if you went and looked last week and were disappointed, now there's a whole lot more stuff there, right? So we describe what the event was. We've got the Jackal video along with a little bit of text and a link to take you to the full article. We've also got new AKs from PSA. See, that's something I've not done a separate article for that yet. So you wouldn't have seen it if we didn't look at this, unless you follow Gear Report on YouTube. So if you're out there watching on YouTube and you don't mind, uh, it, we appreciate the thumbs up. But if you would subscribe and click the little notification, then you'll get notified whenever we post something and you'll see cool stuff like new AKs from PSA. And uh, I was kind of happy about this because we got two kinds, the AK-104 and then the fifth generation AK. They call it a GF-5. That's the one on the right. The 104 was on the left. The 104 that they show us is a little bit uh, shorter. Uh, it's in a pistol configuration. I think, I think it was a side folder, actually. Let me mute that. And... Um, Let's see, the G5 was in the rifle configuration, and it had the machined aluminum handguard. I got a little happy with the graphics on this one and threw some, some witty comments in the video along the way. So I highly encourage you to go check those out. And also you get to see there's TJ shooting. That's uh, TJ shooting the 104. And let's see, I thought we had, so we did the 104 first, I think. There's the one of, or the, the G5, GF5, excuse me, GF5. And uh, so we did that and then went across the street to the range and shot that one as well. And, and I really got to thank PSA for taking care of us. I get a little nervous when we go to an event that is both public and media, because we don't interact well, right? We, we have different goals. The public just, they're waiting in line. They paid to be there. They want to do their thing. They don't want to be bothered by us assholes who don't want to wait in line, but we're trying to hit all the booths and film and share information with people. Um, but PSA did a good job of pulling us off to the side without disrupting the flow of the paying customers, so to speak. So, so good on you for that. Um, you can see I'm not an AK uh, expert here because I was being a little too, I was babying a little bit too much, but I really, really like that aluminum handguard, the way that felt. Uh, I think I'm going to see if I can't get one of those. Um, all right. So let's get back to, we had that. We already saw the Microtech. We already saw the two Taurus videos. I think we saw the Riker grip. Maybe that was published since the last one. Maybe it wasn't. I think we already looked at that one. We've got things coming from, let's see, what do we have? We talked about Century and Canic. We got another from Heritage Firearms. The, we're going to look at the barkeep, the little uh, 22 revolver with the, the super short barrel. Um, and what else do we have? We have Lead Star Arms. We have their Helium and the Grunt, which is like a $750 with a bunch of upgrades built into it, uh, kind of baseline AR. Um, that may be the extent of what we have left to edit there. So, yeah, that's what I know. And in theory... In theory, let's make sure we're back here. Yes. In theory, we have uh, the new Daniel Defense DD5 bolt action rifle in the queue to come for review pretty soon. Although um, it's kind of interesting that the Daniel Defense rep, uh, you know, sought me out and pulled me aside to say, hey, we'd really like to do some work with you and send you this rifle to review. Um and then I immediately sent the follow-up like the day we got back from after the event and haven't heard a word yet. So like, really, we, we shall see. Um, all right, sticking with the theme of having different, um, having different custom shirts every week. Here's the one I made this week. Let me see if I can get in here 
a little closer. I'm American. Weapons are part of my re religion. I really was hoping that that um, Honcho Fett would be here because that's kind of uh, you know similar to what his brother Bobo says quite a bit. You know. So anyhow, uh, if you have ideas for witty firearms, outdoor, you know, gear, 2A related shirt designs, let me know and uh, I will make it, if, you know, if I like it well enough, I will make it and wear it in an upcoming show because that's the way we do things here. I think I'm going to hang on to this one and I may wear this one on Hank's show on Friday as well. Let's see. All right. What else we have here? Oh, man. We got a whole bunch of stuff in the comments. I appreciate you guys out there. Uh, let's see. Giving us the thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Castle nut and end plate. Yes, that's what the um, Strike Industries, uh, the CNX Castle nut, the EEP. So was it ECN? So it enhanced castle nut, enhanced end plate, something like that. Yeah, those looked really nice. I got to admit, I, I don't always like the the kind of bougie stuff that people put on, but that that looked pretty good. Do you have any meetups here in Nebraska for creators and advocates? Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure it's a wonderful state. Uh, we're getting open carry in Tennessee as soon as Lee signs it. I don't know who Lee is, but it reminds me, if anyone else uh, is fans of the musical stylings of Tenacious D, they have a song by the name of Lee that's really catchy. I recommend you go listen to it immediately. All right. Swooping camera work on the range, drama me. So, you know, it's funny you mention that because that's something that TJ and I have talked about quite a bit. And, and over the course of different events, uh, I remember, geez, it was two, three years ago, Pickle, uh, our, the camping guy, went with me to a firearms event and he'd never done camera work uh, for Gear Report before. So we're out there and, and I gave him the camera and some coaching on how to operate the camera, but nothing about angles or, or not much about it. And I got back and looked at those pictures and I had like 27 pictures that were almost identical, you know, like from the same angle at the same distance with the same zoom level. And he just kept taking pictures and kept taking pictures. And I'm like, well, they're all the same. So, so, you know, we really try to make things look a little bit cooler and, and people want to see things, you know, so, so we move around and, uh, you know, if we're just on one side, then, you know, maybe you can't see the ejector port or where the brass goes or whatever. So we move around to the other side. We want you to see both sides of it, how it works, be able to get some of the um, uh, different angles so you can see like how much recoil, how much it's pushing us back, how much muzzle rise we're getting, that kind of thing. Um, and also, I just think it looks better. And we've got the little um, DJI Osmo Plus. It's a 4K camera on a gimbal. Um, and it does super smooth video, even when we're moving around. So if you want to see some of that, go check out the Riker Grip video. I played around while TJ was doing a class with Ron. Ron was, was running TJ through a bunch of drills. I played around with moving around... Uh, in close and then backing up and doing like big arcs across the range and looking like from up on the hill down at the range and swooping across and we just really tried to jazz it up a little bit. So um, I'm open to any kind of uh, feedback you guys have on that stuff. All right. What's the weight on that pistol? I'm assuming we're talking about the jackal because that's what TJ was holding out with one hand. Um, I don't remember. We'd have to go. If you go back and look at the article, there may be a weight mentioned, but since, since there's still prototypes, I'm not sure that they actually got down to the spec of, you know, it's eight pounds, three ounces. I, I don't think they got to that level yet. Uh, when they get to the production guns, I'm sure they will. But, uh, 
TJ's a big dude. He's got big hands and he works with his hands. So they're strong. So it, it's, I think it's a little deceptive how easy he made it look when he was holding it. He's a strong dude. So not that, not that other people aren't, but you know, I think he makes it look easier. Uh, I feel like the brace designs can be way better developed. Oh my goodness. So Oh, this is one of my hot point issues. Thank you for bringing it up. We talked about the tail hook a little while ago. And the tail hook is the only pistol brace that I have used that actually makes sense to me. The um, and, and the reason is when you're holding it out, let's see if I can find an angle here. It actually comes under your arm. And then kind of goes up. So, so your pistol brace comes out here. Your buffer tube comes out. It hooks onto it, comes down and under so that the weight of the firearm going down picks it up into your arm. So it's actually functional, but you don't strap it on. This is a big deal about braces. To me, most of them are absolutely silly because they're not designed for actually shooting. They're clearly just designed to get around the law. Uh, that designates the short barrel rifle as something that you have to get um, ATF approval for. So the brace, it, it's functionally ridiculous. Something strapped to your arm, you have a malfunction, you, you know, something goes wrong. How do, you, how do you drop it, go to your secondary weapon? How do you deal with clearing jams where you need both hands? It's really functionally kind of ridiculous. But the tail hook because it's not strapped on, you have complete flexibility. You want to toss the gun, just toss it. You know, it's not strapped to you. So that's only one I think is actually developed as a pistol brace and not just to get around the law. Uh, I like the shirt. Well, thank you very much. Um, and Buck does too. Really appreciate that. Uh, just send me your other ideas because, uh, you know, I got the vinyl cutter and I got a stack of shirts. I went and got like two six packs. They were multicolor shirt six packs. So I got like a dozen blank shirts and I have rolls of these heat transfer vinyl that I run through the vinyl cutter, cut them, iron them on, bam, that's it. And this one, I even got fancy on this one and put the little gear report circle on the sleeve. So I will likely wear this when we go to the Iraq veteran 8888 range day. Uh, boy, I think that's coming up in less than a month now. That's uh, that's going to be towards the end of April. I, I heard from Brandy this morning. I got to send over everyone's uh, uh, T-shirt sizes for that because they provide us with shirts and food and little swag packs and stuff when we go to that event. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Shirt, shirt. I love the D. And the D, he's referring to Tenacious D in case you are you know, have a middle school mind and thought he was talking about something else. Tenacious D, they call themselves the D. And some of their stuff is completely awesome. Some of it's a little too Jim Carrey-ish for me. But uh, man, they got some good stuff. And if you hadn't listened to the Lee song, you should go listen to the Lee song. Ah, got it. A governor who's actually trying to do something productive. That's awesome. I live in North Carolina where Obergruppenfuhrer Cooper is uh, very aggressively pushing every ridiculous policy that the Democrat Party has proposed here. And it's, it's mind-numbingly maddening. But, you know, that's just what I think. It's smooth. All right. Oh, this is a camera angle discussion. That's what I'm thinking is if we if we just hold the camera still, it gets boring. But if we're moving it around, you never know what you're going to see next. And you know something I've started doing that I that hasn't no one's commented on the videos. And it's a little frustrating to me. I like to do the camera actually in front of the barrel, you know, so so that you're as you're as you're looking, you kind of see if this is the gun. You, it comes around and in front. 
and then comes back the other way. And I'm waiting for someone to comment about, oh my God, he's going to shoot the cameraman. And you know what? I'm 6'4". I got long arms, dude. So, so I will take the camera and I'm standing well out of harm's way and I'll kind of reach it out and in front and then back around and kind of do an arc around the front of the firearm. And with that little 4K gimbal, it just, it's silky smooth coming around there. I think it looks pretty cool. We did that in the Riker grip and maybe a couple other ones from, from that event. Um, I just think it looks cool. Try, trying to learn how to make the videos a little bit better. Tail hook is like a cantilever. Yeah. And and honestly, so the, the first model that I said I like better because it's all metal, it's aluminum. Um, the cantilever kind of hooks up underneath. But then when you shoot, the recoil pushes the buffer tube down a little. You know, uh, barrel comes up a little. And so it kind of pivots about the, the pistol grip. Um, and there's a little bit of a gap and a smaller surface on top for, for stopping that. Uh, I think that's something they did better in the Tailhook Mod 2, like the one that we saw on the uh, DB10P pistol in the review that Caleb did, is that section that goes across the top of your forearm is a little bit more robust to, to help stop that uh, pivot back around the pistol grip so but again the tail hook is the only one that i've seen that actually makes sense as a pistol brace to me oh yeah i think i am actually uh i'm gonna shave see i i got uh i think i'm gonna do the buzz cut on the sides and, and buzz it down flat and all over the face because i am conscious of how much hair is falling out on top and buzzing the sides doesn't doesn't put more hair on top but it makes that contrast look a little bit less and getting rid of all this gets rid of the gray because you can't see it because it's cut down to the skin and i'm just vain enough that that's important to me um sort of i say it's important but i didn't shave for this one i don't know I feel like everyone here knows me and, and you either like me or don't, whether I have gray hair or not. And that's probably not going to be a deciding factor, but going on a larger stage with people who don't know me, I would have put my best crock covered foot forward uh, and make the best impression possible. And uh, I don't know, and flog my vanity a bit. All right. So things we have coming up, let's go to... There it is. Reviews that will be published soon. I don't know if this one will be published soon or not, but I just got, where's the camera? All right. I just got these three little rubber pistol grip thingies. So a camo, an olive drab, and a black. And they are little rubber sleeves. Oh, I just had an idea for another use for these. Um but I don't think it's appropriate for this show. I think instead we'll use them for what they're designed for. And that is, what are they called here? This is the tactical, yeah, sorry, my studio light is right at the, the wrong angle that it's washing this out. Maybe if I put it here, tactical grip sleeve glove uh, from, who is this? It was something with a V, I think. They didn't put their brand on here. I don't know. It's on Amazon, though. This was something that came in through Amazon uh, through their reviewer program. And I was like, yeah, why not? I got a couple Glocks. I'll throw one on there. I always used to like the Hogue grips. Uh, so maybe that'll be similar. And they also sent this with it. If you have a question what this is, they even tell you it is a microfiber cleaning cloth. What for? I have no idea. But uh, they sent it and it has a picture of a gun on it. So that's kind of interesting. But I'll, I'll try these out pretty soon, and I may do a quick review on that. I don't think I'll do a full review on that one. Uh, my wife likes the shockwave, as I can adjust the strap better for her. Ah, okay, so interesting. Right, so, so it's kind of like the, the Riker grip, I think, where it was designed specifically to compensate for uh, someone who, who has some health issues that make shooting in the traditional way a little bit more complicated. Sounds like she's finding that shockwave helpful 
for for dealing with a little bit of a disability. So so that makes sense. But um, but for a uh, a fully abled person, I think that these strap on braces are um, kind of an insult to our intelligence because it's like, all right, people, we know why they're made this way. Let, let's not let's not play that game. But at the same time, I love anyone uh, who's willing to come out with a product that, that flat out thumbs or nose at the ATF and all of their unconstitutional rules and policies and rulings, uh, because they're ridiculous and that whole department should go away. Uh, but that's just my opinion happens to be the right opinion, but you know, that's what it is. All right. What else can we talk about here? We have been on, go back to comments. 8.30. Oh, we've already passed the 30 minute mark. So we may go ahead and shut this down. We're, we're past 40 minutes. If anyone has anything else you want to talk about, now is the time to bring it up. Uh, let's see other things that we have in the queue. I, I know that various writers have things that they're working on. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to remember what they are at this point. Things I can tell you about. Um, I have, I've got a couple more videos to edit. Uh, let's see, let's start arms Two, two from them, one from heritage, uh, got to finish the one from Canic. So those will all be coming as soon as I can get to them. Honestly, I've spent too much time on video and not enough time shipping some Humvee parts. And I've had some shipping companies that have decided to get difficult and stuff that has been okay in the past. They're bouncing it back to me saying, no, we can't do that. So I'm having to kind of back up and punt and figure out how to get stuff to people uh, using different companies with different terminals that aren't anywhere near my house. And it's going to be a royal pain. So I've been spending too much time with that, but I got to get these parts out to some people. Um, and then we're going to get ready for the Denton military vehicle show. That is at the end of the month. I think I got my months mixed up. Iraq veteran 8888 is next month. The end of this month, the 23rd, 24th, 25th, somewhere in that neighborhood um, I said this month of April, this coming month is the military vehicle show in Denton. It's at the Denton farm park in Denton, North Carolina, the thriving metropolis of Denton, North Carolina. A lot of Humvee and other military vehicle owners are going to be down there. And this, this is a big deal because there haven't been a lot of military vehicle shows and everyone is just chopping at the bit to get out at one. Um, and we may have some cool new things to show off on the Battle Wagon 3 at that show. Uh, the truck's been running great, drove it all the way to the event in South Carolina and back. Um, found, found a little issue with the geared fan drive that I've got to fix uh, in the next couple days. And then it is uh, clear to be driven again. Um, actually, some, some bolts came loose and fell out, which was a little scary. But... Uh, I've got replacement bolts. I'm going to put those in. Everything should be back to normal. Uh, let's see what else. I I think uh, I think that pretty much covers all the big things we have on the agenda right now. There are still a variety of products that we're waiting on brands to send. Look at that. I was just talking about uh, uh, kind of obliquely talking about Jason because I've been struggling with uh, some shipping companies that have been easy to work with in the past, but are becoming a royal pain in the ass right now. And I am uh, having to kind of look for new and creative ways to get uh, palletized uh, big batches of Humvee parts out to people like Jason. So hopefully I'll have that solved tomorrow because I think I finally got the final response from Fastenal, who's been my go-to uh, today that some of that stuff isn't going to work and I may have to go to a different company now. So we're going to see how that works out tomorrow. Anyhow, um, thank you so much for everyone for being here. We, we've, uh, we have squandered almost 45 minutes of everyone's lives at this point. I will ask one last thing that, um, I'm just curious if anyone has any thoughts or comments on the, um, 
the stuff going on with Rob Pincus talking about different types of gun control and, you know, we need to limit some people from getting all guns, not, uh, and, and, and he actually published it with a gun control advocate. They, they came together with this little manifesto of things that they agree on. And, uh, I happen to be pretty much a teetotaler when it comes to the second amendment. You know, I believe that, that all gun laws are infringements and most gun laws, uh, uh, have a disproportionate impact on, you know, minorities and lower income people. Um, all the things that seem to get liberals upset about everything else also apply to gun laws, but somehow they want to push those as if they're helping. Uh, and, and I don't get that. So anyhow, um, I apologize that all you had was me this evening, but I appreciate everyone here being interactive in the comments. I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for now. So until next time, we'll see you at the range.